The Trump administration is supporting DACA after campaigning in 2016 to repeal it. I can't believe a Republican betrayed his voters in campaign promises to compromise with the Socialist Democrats, said no thinking person ever. So, Matt Walsh published an excellent article on The Blaze going into this far better than I could. I recommend you go reading it. I'll be referencing it a lot. But he identified something I've been talking about with a lot of people I know. Church, it sucks. Full disclosure, I am not an atheist. What? A political YouTuber who's not an atheist. He must be an evangelical creationist and thinks that the sun revolves around the earth. Burn the heretic. Hold your torches and pitchforks, my dudes. I say that because I'm coming at this topic from someone who wants churches to succeed. I come from a place of love, not with someone who wants churches replaced with government schools. But enough about that. Here's the problem. Church sucks. It really, really sucks. You ever hear a sermon? What happens is that Father Mumbles toddles onto the altar and spends three minutes reading from the Bible and giving us platitudes about race, being nice, or doing the right thing, followed by ten minutes of songs so repetitive they make pop radio seem fresh and original. Oftentimes, I space out. In Matt Walsh's article, he tells the story of his preacher doing a sermon about friendship. Friendship! It's not like we live in a morally confusing world, and people of the faith go to church every Sunday for moral guidance in their day-to-day lives. It's not like there's serious problems in modern society, such as promiscuity, adultery, out-of-wedlock births, abortion, heresy, worship of the false deity, the state, the continual erasure of religious liberty to avoid offense, or literal genocide being committed against Christians in the Middle East right now. The big problem facing Christendom that our brave thought leaders in Christ face under threat of social ostracism is friendship. If I wanted to learn about friendship, there's a cartoon about colorful talking horses for that. I'd at least be entertained. Matt Walsh lists other brave topics our fearless clergy are facing down. Racism, inclusivity, pollution. If it's any consolation, Pope Francis is all over that. Anyways, the strategy for keeping people in church now seems to be to put us to sleep rather than feed us anything of substance or value. Churches have sacrificed their substance on the altar of inoffensiveness and inclusivity. People aren't leaving the church because it's offensive. They're leaving it because they're starving. Churches, you are starving us. We're getting killed out there in the culture war. And all you have to say is inane, vapid platitudes about racism and inclusivity and friendship. And that's when we're lucky. Churches used to be the nerve center of Western civilization, the bastion of every moral and ethical advancement in the West. Churches were what preserved Roman law and Greek philosophy following the fall of the Roman Empire. The Protestant Reformation made Christ accessible to the common people. The churches were at the forefront of the anti-slavery abolitionist movement in 19th century America. That's not to say it's been perfect. They were also at the forefront of the prohibitionist movement the Inquisitions, and the Holy Wars following the Protestant Reformation. But more importantly, they actually stood for something. They made us think. They made us look at our own reflections and recoil at what we saw. By the grace of God, we chose to do better. I want to go to a church that can challenge me. I want to be challenged, to be offended. Offend me, priests. Make me uncomfortable. Make me angry at me. And make me angry at you for being angry at myself. I ask this of you because, guess what? The truth is offensive. Should you drive me to leave for telling the truth, then so be it. You're probably better off without me anyways. But for the love of God, stand for something. Yours is a glorious history, full of tales of redemption, revelation, and liberation, and the greatest story of them all, the resurrection of the Christ. The sheep need their shepherds' churches. It's time we get to work. Tell us a story about the Tower of Babel and how it relates to our lives. Tell us about Jonah and the whale. Warn us of the insidious nature of Satan, of heaven and hell. We're dying to know. If you won't do it, then I will. This is not a religious channel. It's a political one. That won't stop me.